So um, this is a disassembly video and how to clean the Daytona SCAR H. Now, for anybody that doesn't know, Daytona basically make these guns from a shell. So they'll take a um, any particular make or model, strip out all the insides, and then make um, put their own items in there, so it's all brass and aluminium and stuff, to make it so it's got a decent kickback and that's that's the whole point that's what these guns do if you see any youtube videos of these it's you see the person actually there is a recoil on it like um, a proper gas blowback recoil system and um when you purchase these that's really what you're expecting they're not cheap but nothing quality ever is So how do you take this apart? Well, let's let's have a look at it, shall we? I'll try and get the light a bit more focused for you. So there's a couple of things you need to be aware of. First of all, when you purchase this, I would highly recommend you also buy some of this uh, lubrication. It's called Get Some 1000. It's what they use on their maintenance. I'd highly recommend that you use it on this because that's that's like the manufacturer's spec, so to speak. So it's a good idea. You also want some blue Loctite or some uh, non-permanent Loctite and the reason for this is a lot of these screws that come out you'll be taking out each time you do any maintenance and what you don't want to do is have them so tight that they thread which I've done a few times so be aware of that I'd also get yourself various amounts of tissue and a cloth which I've got over here of some description because it's going to get messy. Now, when you buy the scar, you'll notice a few things. First of all, it, ha it does come with uh, the. There's a few pieces missing. The the front side is missing from this one. I've changed the front rail. This is a PTS um, kinetic MREX rail, and um, I've changed the grip as well. This is the uh, the Fab AG43 um, grip. I just prefer it. And this is, it's also got a, a sear inside it to make it semi-auto. It did come, originally come into the UK with a low power air shaft, but I've changed that. That's now a high power air shaft and I'll show you what they look like. So, when you first buy the SCAR, it'll come with this selector. I'll just move this into camera. This selector is the the standard full auto selector. Doesn't look like much, but it's hilarious how important this is. I'll move this into frame a little bit easier. Very easy to change to semi. I'll show you that in a minute. If I can go in there. Highly recommend a spare screw set, because you never know when one of these screws is going to go a bit weird. Um, these are um, palm crush rings, I think they are. Spare ones of them. And I've also got some more springs and bookings. So you've got the you've got the standard booking, which is this one, which is the bespoke one. And they've also got this one, which is the advanced one, which comes with uh, by default comes with this. It also comes with a. A grip, uh, sorry, a line already on it. So I'm just going to push this on. This is what the standard line looks like that comes with it. Standard push fit. Nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it at all. It fits really well. It's even got the little seal on the end. I changed it for a moulded one like this. And the only reason why is because I don't particularly want uh, to have a non-moulded uh, end, so to speak. 
as I said, I've taken off the front sight. Uh, so this is the hop-up unit that you get already in installed into the weapon, unless you buy the kit. Uh, be, be aware of this, though. This is your um, the feed, that, that, uh, that the actual BB feeding tube. Now on this one, what's quite interesting is this is solid. Whereas on mine it isn't, so I might need to tighten that up. So that's all in one block that sits pretty much like this in in the in the gun. So it pretty much sits like that. This is the air shaft. This is actually the low power one, but they're identical when you look at them. And um, and this is the cylinder it sits in. You've also got uh, various other components in here, but this basically sits in a block. And when the uh, when the uh, gun fires. What happens? It's actually this way around in the gun. It, it pushes everything this way and releases air. This bit actually goes into this bit actually goes into here, like so. You see, there's already a spring on that one there. And again, that sits pretty much like this in the gun. Take that out. Um, this is actually the booking. Or one of the bookings that you can get for it. Again, they make them themselves, so highly recommend you order a couple of these. So we'll put this back in here because we're not using this today. I will do a breakdown of how you change the booking. I'll be honest, I've not done it yet, so we'll see. We'll put this back. Let's give you another look at this. Let's try and get it in focus for you. There we go. Now, I'll be honest, I normally shoot videos in 4K. Um, I just for, for whatever reason I can't do that at the minute so this is 1080p I'll try and make it as clear as I possibly can I do apologize up front for any any issues with that so let's get this out of the way okay tools in order to take this apart you're gonna need a screwdriver to take this off it has a bolt here where's my trusty tools you don't need these but these help it says a dental pick obviously unused I've not nicked it from a dental pick and an artery forceps now these things are brilliant for holding pins in place and stuff like that so we'll put them there headache tablets not included okay so first thing we'll need to do is to well, first of all, you want to make sure there's nothing in it. So obviously you've you've cleared it. Um, make sure there's you know there's nothing inside, and the barrel's clear. And that's more safety than anything else. You don't obviously want anything to happen while you're doing this. I'm just going to check that. Yeah, okay. So I'm currently resting it on its rail um, because I need to undo this. Now, like I said, this isn't a standard one. So if it's a little different from when you get yours, don't worry about that. It, it's just that this bit here is the same. The way it mounts on here is the same. It still uses the pin inside. So the so first thing I'm going to do is take that out. I'm just blinding myself. So if I hoist this up to the camera, you'll see quite clearly now there's a Phillips or crosshead screw in the bottom of there. That's all I'm doing is undoing that. Like so, I always leave the screw in the bottom as well because it it just saves you having to find the screw at a later date or later time. So there's a little nut here, which you should be able to see on the camera to be honest. It's just there. Let's get the trusty light out of it again because that really helps. You can see it just here. Make sure you don't lose that nut. So we're going to take the lower off because you have to take the lower off. To take the lower off, you've got a bolt here, which obviously comes out, same as anything else. Uh, there's nothing holding it on this side. So once you've pulled that bolt out, um, it, it's actually quite straightforward after that. So I need something to push that out with. So that's clicked out now, that's clicked out. Okay, now, sorry, the way to do it is that you lift up from this side and pivot on this side, right? So you lift from here. And the whole thing 
should should just come out it's a bit stiff so we'll give it the benefit of the doubt there we go and once that's out obviously you need to pull the pressure hose through it like so and then you can put that to one side but what we're actually going to do is we're going to put this to one side and show you this first this is the selector and the trigger unit for the Daytona Scar H. Now, it's actually quite easy to work on. Basically, what you've got is you've got a, um, a semi sear, this one here, and your full auto sear here. Or lever, we'll call them levers. Okay, so you've got, you've, you've got one lever here, one lever here. And what they do is as you turn this, they, they move very, very slightly and allow the allow the gun to change between one and the other now changing this is a lot easier than i thought it was going to be because in the uk obviously we're restricted to certain laws where uh, f frames per second for a dmr are generally either 400 or below generally i mean they might you might you might go to a site and it's not so bad but let's see what we can do with this here and like i said i do apologize for the blurriness but we, we have what we have. So to take this out, incidentally, is very straightforward. It's literally just, um, you've got like a screw here and uh, you'll have underneath here, there's, let me just see if we can get that in light. Yep, there's a small hex screw there as well. That screw takes this assembly out that screw allows this to slide out as a whole unit it's it's absolutely nuts I, I must give daytona credit for their simplicity on this these levers are easy to pull out one of them wants to come out one of them doesn't the uh, auto see it doesn't want to come out that's this one and what you can probably t see here is there's a spring attached to it it's a bit blurry but there's a there's a spring that c that's attached to this but um, that keeps it in place. So you can't take that one. You can't move that one without moving this one. Well, you can, but it's fiddly as hell. So what we're going to do is now I've got that one there. We should be able to spring that one out like so. This one wants to come out, right? Now they're all held on here by various different springs. And you, I see if you can see that spring there. There's there's that spring. And the same for this one. There's another spring on there as well. They're held on by this pin. And this pin is held on by a circlip, which is just a circular clip that goes in there. All right. Let me just turn that around a bit so we can get you some more light on there. It's there. It's that pin there. It's that circular clip there. If you take this out, you can actually maneuver these up a little bit just so that pin, the pin that goes through the middle of them, is free just slightly. You then take the circlip off and you can slide this sear off. Remember, it's, it, it's also on a, it's on a spring, but the spring isn't under a lot of tension, so it's not difficult to maneuver. And you can actually get away with, so you move that out, take this one off, uh, sorry, take the other one off, put this one on, and this one's got the notch on the top, and then it's locked to semi. And they sell that part. So, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this back in, like so, because you have to have this one open to slide that one in and it it sits under this here so as you can see if I do that it stays in place that one wants to go in all right so the the selector button this is is very straightforward it you know as long as you're careful when you're changing this you're not going you won't run into any issues so that's that's the lower okay so very clearly you can see we have the hop unit, which is here, under here. We have the block itself, which is what the cylinder sits in, and the air shaft. We have the, there's, uh, let's call this the gas block, because this is where, obviously, the pressure, the, the air under pressure comes into and hits that, and this has got seals on it. And then you have a lovely piece of machined, uh, I think it's aluminium in the back, in the back or aluminum, um, in the back. To clean it, all of this needs to come out. Now, I'd recommend you do this after, say, well, it depends. If, you, if you're playing in the rain, then I would do this uh, after every game. 
but I'd say every three or four games do this. You'll notice that I've also got some uh, different screws in, and this is because I Loctited too much and had to drill them. My fault. Nothing to do with Daytona. They do say, you know, you need to be careful. Don't hang off the screws or, or whatever. Just just do this, okay? Right, so let's have a look. So the first thing we need to do is take the boot off or take um, the stock off. To take the stock off, there's a screw on the other side. So we're going to turn this over like this. I'm going to move that out of the way so it doesn't get squashed and spray it everywhere. And you, the, the screw is actually here. <laughs> it's actually, I've changed that one too. Again, for the same reason. That's me being an, uh, an idiot. That's nothing to do with Daytona. So again, don't hang off these screws. They will cause you problems if you're not careful. Unfortunately, I mean, and you could be um, a bit miffed about that, but I'll be honest, the be it's the benefits or the curse of the gas blowback. So this has got a little bit of uh, blue Loctite on it. So we'll put that there. Once this is off, this will slide off. This is on, it's on, it pushes on. As you can see, I've already broken the seal on it. Now, in here is a shaft that's under tension with a spring on it and two rubber buffers here. You can't see them yet, but as you push this off, it'll want to come out here. So make sure you put your, your thumb on the back of here or a finger. It's not under enough pressure to do you any harm, but it's you certainly don't want it to go halfway across the room. So my thumb is on them now, so I'm just gonna remove this. I'm gonna put this under the desk Oop, with everything else. And you'll see as I move my finger, that's what's trying to come out so and this is it's like the tension spring okay so this spring actually comes off it's coated in oil at the minute so i don't really want to do too much to it so i'm going to put that on there like so that's the covered in oil now this was clean not so long ago it's just a, i thought that um yeah it might be clean and i'm not going to do much cleaning or putting oil on because it's already done but it's a good way of showing people how these things fit together Okay, now, put this back up here like so. There are now four screws, hex screws, each side. Uh, sorry, two and two. And they hold this bracket on. And this bracket holds all of this in. Okay. So, let's have a look what size of pin this requires. It's not that one. You'd think I'd done this enough times that I'd know. No. Nope. Definitely not that one. Yes, it is that one. Okay. So this is a, it says on it, 2.5. That doesn't really help, does it? Um, let's see. You probably can't see that anyway. I will be getting a 4K camera at some point that can do this. So, these screws, if you if you have to twist more than that, be very very careful because they will that you're going to thread them. I have actually got one that's threaded that I need to repair, which is why I've got the thread kit here. Um, so these are the screws. It's covered in blue Loctite. That's fine. If it came out without any Loctite, I'd be worried. So that goes there. There's the other one. Let me move these out of the way. It's got like a ratchet system on it, actually. that's why it's clicking. That one. I can't think which one's the. And that one. So all four screws are out. 
So, what you do is just hold on to the back, and you, you shouldn't have to force any of this. And just pull, just rock this backwards and forwards very, very slightly, and it'll just come out. I would keep hold of this as well, or you, you may have components that want to come this way. That's all this is. It just holds the stock on. That's all it does. I would keep, as you take these bits out, keep them in the same orientation as they came out, because that way at least you'll know which way they went in. So, for example, with this lovely piece of aluminium, aluminium, see how it comes out that way? And that way up? Yeah, so that allows for the that shaft to pass underneath it. So make sure that goes back the way it came out. Again with the block, that should just slide out. Be cautious, the seals inside this. You don't want to mess some seals up. For some bizarre reason I thought of a, an actual seal then. As you do. There's a spring here. It's very, very difficult to see on the camera. So I'm gonna hold I'm gonna hold that there and I'm just gonna pull this lot out. I want to try and leave the spring in. It doesn't matter if it comes out. It's just easy to keep track of. Then this whole assembly comes out. And this is attached to the rail at the top as well. Uh, once you get it to a certain, uh, so far out, you'll need to take out the charging handle. That's also how you would change it over. You'd basically get to this stage and then uh, it lines up with a, the hole on the side here. But this won't come out with that in place. So now that's out, this whole assembly slides quite merrily out of the upper. Right, now, now that's out, you can clean all the inside of this. Don't be shy, give it a right good clean. And when we put it back together again, you'll give it a right good oiling as well. Make sure you keep track of this. Right, I'll just show you how easy this is to remove. That's it. That's all that is. And that's what sits over you, BB. I don't Loctite it, because I don't want any Loctite getting anywhere else. But be mindful of that. Very mindful. So if your screw did come out, and you can <coughs> If your screw did come out, and you can take it out, don't worry about it, just be careful with it, that's all. Not a massive screw. It's not a massive spring, sorry. Just bring that out. Doesn't matter which way that goes in. Yep. So what we'll do is we'll we'll put that there. So now we're left with just the front and the upper. Now, you could take this off, but I'd rather not because it, it wasn't great to install, I'll be honest. If I've got the original one on, you basically you undo these here. There's, there's a bolt there, a bolt there that are under the spring, so they don't they don't come out. And two Allen key bolts here. And as long as all this is out, then you can take the entire barrel and everything out. This is still encased. It looks exactly the same as it was before. So you'd still need to undo all of this to get it the the um, at the booking inside. I'll do a separate video on that. Okay. So you give this a good clean. Uh, so get get a rag in there, get all the all the nastiness out, so to speak. Make sure that it's all clean and that you don't have anything in there. Um, I'll just turn this over so you can see it. There's nothing to it. Yep. It's 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 actually quite light with all that out as well. So here's the front of it, as well. Very similar to what you'll have. Um, if you see these oil things on the outside, that's that's actually a good thing. Uh, that's where the you change the uh, where you turn the screw to change the half up adjustment. Just in case you were wondering, and that should go straight down. You can't see it, but it does go straight down into the hop unit itself. Uh, show you underneath, maybe. There you go. Nothing to it really. Well, it's very well made, very well put together. Okay. So. Assembly. It's just the same as what you've done. Uh, what we will do is I'll show you this, the internals of this. I'll do this on this cloth. So you have the, your block, which is this, which is attached to the top rail. 
Uh, sorry, well, the top slidey bit, I should say. Let's say slidey bit, because that sounds better. It's held on by a single pin that goes in the side. Now, I'll be honest, I wouldn't lock tight that. There's no need, because it's moving this way. It's not having to come this way. If it was moving in the direction it was screwed in, I would lock tight it. If, you've, if you're putting this together as a kit and you get this part here, that needs lock tighting. In fact, it's recommended on the website that when you first purchase the, the air shaft, that what you do is you take these Allen keys, you get an Allen key on these, and if they're loose, take them out, put permanent Loctite on, and then make sure that's solid, because this is taking the brunt of the force of when it's moving. You can take this out very easily. You just remove that bolt, and the whole thing slides out. And it looks like what I was showing you before, which is this. That's all it is. Now in the back, you do have a brass grommet type thing. I'll show you in a sec. It's actually <laughs> held in by machine, as in it's machined to be... Um... Oh, there it is. Uh, machine to be very, very close to the width of that. So it goes in with the seals inwards, like so. So when you're when you're cleaning it, you can take this out. Yeah, you just what I was doing in the background is just basically doing that, as in shaking this like that, and then it came out. Make sure you put lots of lube in there, um, which is in here, and that'll just push back in. And it is quite snug. I'll push that in with my with my thumb. So that's really what's inside here. It just saves me taking it out again after I've, I've done it three times. I've tried to record this a few times and I've messed up. So this is the, you know, this is this is the one, so to speak. So that's what you're looking at. Okay, so we've taken that out. We've cleaned the the, the piston itself. We've cleaned all the internals in here, and we've relubed them. And again, we're using this oil or this lubricant go inside here so because I'm going to put this back in I just want to make sure there's plenty of oil here so I'm going to re -loop that so I'm going to put some on here again don't be shy of this stuff this is and I, uh, I would wear gloves by the way because whenever you're working with oils you've got to be careful um, you always want to make sure that you're not um, exposing yourself to any chemicals that you don't want so, and this just slides straight back in again. Like so. As long as you've done everything right, that'll slide in like so. Obviously, we need to put the spring on, but the spring you can just put in. I don't put lube on this, um, mainly because I don't really want to get too much lube on the inside of that. So I'm going to put that in situ. And I'm going to turn this on its side because I need to put the, I need to pull this back a little bit to put this in. Slot it, just slots in. I'm going to push this forward. That needs to be something stopping it. That's interesting. Oh yeah. That's it. So make sure it goes in properly. And then the whole thing moves towards. Now as it approaches this spring, be very careful. You don't want to buckle that spring. So what I tend to do is just lift it just slightly and make sure it sits really nicely on the end of there like so and that should be a fairly smooth motion all the way back okay so you've lubricated everything nicely you've used your get some 1000 you've covered your desk in oil what happens next well the next thing to go on is the air shaft and it goes on like this. Let 
Yeah, just push it on. It will be fine. And then you've got this lovely piece of aluminium. I know I say it's lovely because it just is. I mean, that's that's amazing, that is. And then that goes on as well. Again, lubricate everything. Don't leave anything to chance. Like so. It should all slot in like that. Now, this bit goes on next. It literally just pushes in like that. And then you need to lock tight these. So I'm just going to turn this over to make sure that everything's all nice and straight on the top. Yes, it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... The way I do Loctite might be different to everybody else, but I basically get, get my Loctite, put a few drops into a cap like so. Put this over there. Now, the first screw I'm going to put in is actually the top screw to hold this in place. So what I do is I take my artery forceps, grip said screw, and put it on the end. Uh, okay. I'm going to turn this on its side and put it in situ like this. I'm just going to screw this. Doesn't have to be tightened up just yet. I'm not hanging off it. It's literally just tight. It's it's just tight. So once that's done. Then we're going to move on to the smaller screws. Now, ideally, you'll want to clean these off. Uh, you can either just give them a, you know, um, a quick squidge with something like this, or if you've got one, use a nylon brush or something. You can just clean off any residual um, Loctite. But again, same thing. So, I'm just going to screw that back in. There we go. So, I'll turn it over, I'll do the other side, it's gonna, there's a bit more on this I don't want. hang off it and I would check these screws before gameplay anyway uh, because you don't want them coming out this is the nature of the beast of this thing is it makes so much uh, there's, there's so much vibration with it and so much recoil for, for an air gun uh, well an, an airsoft gun I should say that it will literally shake its bolts out so be very careful with them
So what I'm going to do, now I've done that bit, is I'm going to get one of these tissues that I've got here. Or even I'll just use the cloth, actually. And I'm just going to take off the residual um, lock, lock tight or thread lock off them. Just to make sure it doesn't go everywhere. I'll do that with the top one as well. Okay. So, uh, if I was to use the lever now, everything should fall into place. Now, don't worry if there's, there's, um, there's no tension here because we, we have to put the spring in. So I'm going to do that now. So what I'm going to do is, I'm, I am going to put some additional oil on here. Like so. And it, it, it will only go into one place. You're not going to get it wrong. Uh, because, the, well, I don't see how you could get it wrong, to be honest. And that goes into there like so. Now you'll know when you've got it right because the, the lovely aluminium piece will be flush. Like so. And once you've done that, holding it in place, you slide this on. Now once it's on a certain certain way down, there you go. It'll just you'll just be able to push that down. Like that. It's that straightforward. It's insane. Okay. So now we have the spring in place. You'll find now that when you do try and cock it, there's a lot more, a lot more tension on it, which is good because that's what we want. Okay, so do we use anything on these? Um, I'd say yes. Um, would I cover them in? Well, you know what? A bit of oil wouldn't go too far amiss. Just on the the springy areas. Uh, just a little bits like that, just to kind of protect them a little bit. In fact, I think that would be all I'd do, <laughs> that you can't see. So what I've done is I've just put a little bit here and just left it like that. It doesn't need a lot. Be careful when you put this on because this will try and spring back all the time if it tries to spring back. So you're spinning it over, keep your finger there. Pass the air hose through, as you would. You have to. It's the only way of doing it. Now, tilt it backwards towards your stock. And then it should push down like that. It's, it's actually very straightforward. Push your pin in. And you're good. Then all you've got to do is put, your, um, put the grip on. So I'm going to do that. The grip is here. So we left the screw in because it makes sense. Make sure the bolt's in place, like so. Get your trusty screwdriver. And then we're just gonna screw that in. So I'm gonna use the torch again. Hang off it, just make sure it's tight. Pass this back through here. Like so, give it a cock. Yep, and that's really it. That's all there is to it. Um, it's not a difficult project to work on. You know, there's not um, many gotchas to it. Just keep it lubricated. Keep keep it oiled. Keep on top of it. Keep it clean. Because if you don't keep it clean and lubricated and oiled, it, it will fail. It's as simple as that. It's like any other gas thing, isn't it, really? So, to summarise, I'd highly recommend you buy some of this. Get some 1000, it's called. Cool. I've got a few bottles of it. It's what they recommend, and to be honest, I've not found anything else that anybody else has recommended. There might be, but it's at your risk. So, want some of that. Get yourself some non-permanent Loctite. Uh, again, Amazon is your friend. Um, I just got a bit unlucky when it came to the tube. This tube leaks. Well, it say leaks. It's just 
it's not as soon as you tip it off it all comes out and that was no good for for what i needed it for so i just put it into this little pot and then clean it out afterwards make sure you wash your hands after you've done any of this because like you say it's oil and uh you want to make sure that uh you know you're not causing yourself any issue in the future so to speak uh, and that's it so i hope the video helps somebody there are other videos um, I'm happy to take feedback. Um, I'll, I'll try and do one for changing the hop unit. It's just I've not had to do it yet. And I'm very, if it's not broken, don't fix it type of mentality as far as I'm concerned. So, have a very good day or a very good evening. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again.